When we first create a song in Studio One, our loop markers are going to be a bit hidden here in the upper left corner of the ruler. And as we hover, we have these double arrows and we can use that to click, hold and drag our right locator out to wherever we'd like. And the same for our left locator, we have those arrows and we can just pull it out to wherever we'd like. And if you notice here, these loop locators are snapping and that's because our snap is turned on here. If I disengage, then we can move that about freely wherever we'd like. And the snap is going to take into consideration whatever you have your quantized value set to, as well as if you have adaptive mode on as well. And I'm actually going to press the forward slash on the QWERTY keyboard to activate the loop just to make this a bit more visible. And so the second way that we can go about setting the markers is using control and alt or command and option on the Mac. So if I hover the arrow in the ruler and hold down control, we can see we have that vertical line and I can click once to set the left locator. If I hover again in the ruler and hold down alt, we have that vertical line and I can click to set the right locator. And the third method is we have this gray bar at the top of our ruler. And if we hover there, we have this pencil. And if you click, hold and drag, then we can set the markers in this way. And again, you can see that that is snapping because our snap to grid is turned on. Now the method I like to use is actually selecting an audio event or a MIDI part and then pressing P as in Peter on the QWERTY keyboard. And then that will automatically set the markers to that selected audio event or MIDI part. So if I click once to select our MIDI part, press P, then our loop is then around the selected part. Now with this method, keep in mind that the uh, locators are going to be snapped into position here. So if, let me scroll out to the right a little bit and I'm going to turn the snap off by pressing in on the QWERTY keyboard and I'm going to pull this out just a bit to a random position here and turn that snap back on. I'm going to select this audio event and press P to place that there. And then now I'll select the MIDI part. And now that we've pulled that out past bar 16 to a random location, when I select this and press P, we can see that our loop snaps to the beginning of bar 17. So if we have this kind of random length, we would want to be sure that we hold shift while we're pressing P. And then we can see that the loop will, uh, be placed exactly around this randomly sized loop or MIDI part. And we're actually not done here. We have another method. So if we right click on the loop activation button here, we have a loop follow selection. We can also activate that by pressing control alt and P. So I'll go ahead and select that. And then if I right click again, we can see we have that check mark letting you know that that's active. So whenever I select an audio event or our MIDI part, the loop will follow our selection. Now within the transport, we have a display that's going to show us the current positions for our locators. And we can actually hover over any of these fields. So say I'd like to set our left locator here, which is showing that it's beginning on bar 10 and beat one. I can hover on this first field to adjust the bar. So if I use the mouse wheel and move that down, I can then change the position of that left locator back. If I mouse wheel up, then I can move it forward. Moving on to the next field, this is going to be by beat or quarter notes. The next field is 16th notes. And the final field is either by ticks or samples. I'm not quite sure, but that's just going to be a very fine positioning. Let me zoom in a bit here. And I'm going to hover on this last field and you can see this is really going to give you really fine adjustments. And we can also click, hold and drag up or down within these fields. And if we click once we move one digit at a time for whatever field that we in we're in. So if I come to the 16th notes and click once, we can see that's moving one digit at a time. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom back out a bit. And believe it or not, we're actually not finished yet. So if we position our song cursor where we would like our 
loop locator, we can set the left locator by pressing Alt and 1 on the numeric keypad, and that's going to set the left locator wherever we have our song position cursor at. So if I position it, let's say here in the middle of bar 11, then press Alt and 2 on the numeric keypad, that will then set our right locator. And I'm actually going to move this locator in for the final method that we have available to us. And this final method is going to allow us to move the loop section forward or back to the immediately adjacent area. So if I hold down shift and F, then we can see that moves forward. We keep the same length of our loop, but we're just moving forward to the very next area. And then if I hold shift and A, then we can move back in the same way. Now with this last method, there are no hotkeys set up for this by default. So you will need to set these up um, yourself. And the way that you can do that is by coming to the options menu, clicking on studio one and then options, then clicking on the general tab. Then we have keyboard shortcuts here. And in the search field, you'll want to type in shift. And then we can see under transport, we have shift loop. This is going to be shifting it forward. You can see I have shift F where I set my loop up. So this is going to be empty for you if you perform the search for shift. Uh, here is shift loop shift loop backwards. We can see I have shift A that I put in here. But these will be blank for you. So uh, basically just select which one you would like to add your key into, and then click this field here into the key, and then assign it. Okay, and so these are all of the many ways that we can go about setting our loop locators within Studio One Four.